Welcome to the next part of this week where we are trying to discuss the decision support systems for computer aided manufacturing. The big data analytics plays an important role in the computer aided design. There is something known as building information modeling. or we call it BIM. So, these are known as BIM engines or BIM engines where CAD softwares or architects constantly translate their intentions into lines and surfaces in 3D space. A potential method to improve their design process is to suggest pertinent 3D objects derived from the outside data sources that is we try to use the secondary data. or outside data sources, this is our big data. Now, there is something they call it as suggestive web search. Suggestive web search. There are multiple websites which have the database available with them, different libraries available with them. Like we have uh, designs available at uh, um, the Reno Chorus or uh, the Glass Hopper. These are the softwares that helps us to design using just varying the shapes with little information in manufacturing or in architecture. People can have the basic designs done on the software itself. Software means these are the online platforms which helps us to have the basic information or the idea of the design that could be used later to have a very detailed design that could be finally used in manufacturing, in construction, in electrical engineering, in the circuit design, in electronics, wherever you say, in the engine design, in the Rolls Royce, so awesome. So at its core, a recommendation engine can search through huge databases for pertinent information. This information that they gives us is in the form of text or images, sometimes the flowcharts and so on. The users can use it for a particular interface. So there are a variety of machine learning or analytics which helps us to classify the information and try to have the best alternative or comparable and have a complementary design options. So the purpose of the big data analytics in the computer aided design and manufacturing is, I would say purpose is number one to develop a methodology and set of tools that can suggest a model that designer can draw. Suggest models, when I say models, I am talking about CAD models here. Models could be suggested to designers. Next, drawing on the precedent in the area of 3D shape recognition and classification. So here two objectives would be to expedite the 3D modeling with their pre-model suggestions and to motivate the designers to have the alternative designs while having the uh, basic design within themselves from the secondary information that they have and they can complement the existing designs. They can maybe have basic information from them and completely design a new model by themselves. So this is how we try to use. There are multiple studies which have uh, been taken on this challenge. Uh, I would take a study taken by Sue et al. 
which was uh, published in IEEE Explore, in which they used the CNN. CNN is convolutional neural networks. Convolutional neural networks uh, provide very convenient way and thorough alternatives to traditional geometric descriptive metrics in which the uh, images that are taken as inputs and they send pix pixel representation to a series of layers of neurons. So, in a way there are different connections that we have and we have the basic layer here. We have an input image, input image which tries to connect to a convolutional layer, we call it convolutional layer 1 and these neurons have different pixel sizes here. They try to connect to the next layer which try to identify whether uh, what image are we trying to see, whether it is image of a chair, image of a car, image of uh, there are certain network points. There are different I would say connections are just like when we say neural networks. So, they can connect to each other and we have then after certain layers, we have fully connected layer. We call it columnation layer 2 or 3 at one point we get full columnational fully connected layer and we get the output here a few outputs are taken in which finally we get the class where this falls. This could be taken for the examples or the animations which are given in the reference slide of uh, this lecture. So, the, how the neurons do connect with each other and we try to have the decision based upon the past connection. For instance, if you say chair, it can take or make me consider chair something that is uh, being very similar to a toilet seat or maybe to a stool or maybe to something where the person generally sit or so. Uh, depends upon executive chair if you are trying to follow, it will try to connect and try to see where it is matching that we will see what is the study and where do they try to connect these things. So, CNN takes images as inputs and send pixel representation. So, this is we are sending pixel representation. This is sent to a series of layers of neurons. So, instead of matching simple matrix, a process here is known as feature extraction. So, CNN models produce a prediction at its final layer while fine tuning the weights at each neuron. So, one can estimate that the model's accuracy through the iterative training and validation phases, what is it that accuracy could be put? Maybe this is a model of the image that is comparable with a confidence of around maybe 92 percent, 93 percent. This accuracy can also be determined here how confident the model is. So, that is generally a CMN uh, can give you a class or category where does this subject or this model falls. So, the CNN network is a common technique in machine learning. It does not by itself represent a development of or a complex architecture. If the format heterogeneity of uh, publicly available 3D objects makes feature extraction and metadata comparison of difficult processes. So, we can do metadata comparisons. CNN is more relevant to some applications because of its ability to develop some level of intuition solely based upon the spatial features. So, there are certain studies which were taken. The first study is uh, by B. et al. in the year 2021 that you can see this figure is taken from them where a chair 3D shape was to be made. Circular wise, the camera take different pictures of the chair. 
we can decide number of pitches to be taken which are fed as an input to the CNN here so different neural connections are there a 3D shape can be recognized even from a single view at an accuracy far higher than using a state of art 3D shape descriptors or so. So this presents a standard CNN architecture which is trained to identify the shapes rendered views independently of each other. When multiple views of shapes are presented, recognition rates rise even further. Additionally, a recent CNN architecture which compiles data from various 3D shapes into a single condensed shape descriptor that offers even better recognition or performance that is also given. This picture is again taken from Sue et al. 2015. Another study in which VoxNet architecture, VoxNet architecture was given. This is the VoxNet architecture in which you have a plant cloud data and uh, the occupancy grid and we have a convolution layers and finally we try to have a full output layer which helps us to let us know that whether the shape that was input here from the point cloud from the input data which is the class it is falling in where it is showing it falls in the class of toilet maybe. So this VoxNet real time object recognition study VoxNet real time object recognition. This was taken by Maturana and Shanner in the 2015 in which VoxNet helps to take advantage of expanding point cloud databases which are generally collected through LIDAR, LIDAR data or some big scanning data that is the data that they got was cloud data. We can see the plant cloud data is here. LIDAR is a big 3D scanner which helps us to scan maybe the dimensions of this room or it helps us to also scan the geometric dimensions of the full land area that you have. For instance, uh, in the border area, how is the terrain, how is the farm land or so, LIDAR help data helps us to collect large amount of data from there. So from there for the construction LIDAR data helps us to get the plant cloud data and what does this resembles with can be taken through a convolutional neural network system. So using the LIDAR or CAD data the outcomes are assessed against publicly accessible benchmarks. So VoxNet labels hundreds of instances per second. So this is very helpful in identifying uh, the different models or the shapes. How these shapes are identified? There was another study which was taken where we classify and match the data or the volumetric representation was taken from the data. This study was also in year 2017 where you can see the pre-trained and the trained data is there in the post train what do we get? Pre-trained data we get we put the model or image in, in the pixelization we put the pixels of the picture, rasterization of that happens and it tries to compare it with the various forms, we try to rotate the data at different forms and we try to get the network, this is how here our CNN works and we try to rank them and the smooth transformation, smooth data tells us okay this is how it goes. From the 3D shapes, you can see complete how the data is being transformed into the form of a chair. Now the transformation is when we try to transform the data, we give the ranking to that as well and we get the transformation from the different shapes that we have, it is being transformed into a single chair. Then is blending mode, when we have a almost similar object to chair. The voxel slices helps us to get the different images and try to select and try to blend it into the shape that is given here. But this was also one of the ways where the data that is already stored 
in the different libraries it can be taken from those libraries and we can have a comparatively matching between them so in the voxel modeling data i would say mox voxel modeling machine learning so this was examined in this recent study in which the voxel model is first described and contrasted with the conventional model building techniques to examine the prototypical implementations of suggested design systems or workflows based upon the process from rasterization of the space or the geometry within an image so this is uh, how the concepts like pixel maps and graphic representation those were determined here so here there were major two steps one is classifying number 2 is matching when i say classify it tries to classify whether the object that the user is drawing is it correctly labeled as chair or is it a chair bench bed or any image similar to that matching is finding in a database of 3d objects some shapes that are closely resembling to the feature that the user's model input is so returning a list of objects from the database in a descending order of similarity so in a sense we try to input a model of chair right let me say a model of chair is something like this so it goes to a classifier then once the classifier has uh, almost identified what is this class fall to it falls in the class of chair then they try to match it to what kind of chair it is i would put matching then it gives various suggestions suggestions could be it is a chair of shape with a round at the back right it is a chair with kind of the edges at the top right or it could say this is a chair in which the base is round so it depends upon what suggestions is it giving and how intelligent our model is so nesting two different models that is the classifier and the matcher each model first is tested based upon the images that user has modeled then it is trained on the images of the three objects the typical steps to execute this model is number 1 we try to get the data source or we say data generation data generation or sourcing in data generation or sourcing making the database is taken in i would like to describe this as an important step because we share the tools which are built and what are we trying to accomplish what methodologies are we trying to see the data is generally gathered by the study which i just mentioned through platforms such as shapenet modelnet and google 3d so from there different labeled 3d models uh, could be downloaded in different sense they downloaded uh, the shape net database and divided it into 14 distinct classes these classes were of different objects these were chairs tools beds so and the objects which uh, could be taken maybe sofa bathtub plant door vase bench bookshelf or so so then it was taken to a tool known as rhinoceros and another one is grasshopper which i just discussed that these helps us to provide the basic information so this script creates jpg images
in a specific directory. So by rotating the camera around each of the sub subsequent object and taking pictures from the specific angles, this could be created. Generally what happens which I showed you in the previous slide, the image is rotated in a circular fashion. So this is a circular fashion where the image is rotated. So here the new methodology button is save and snap, which this is a chair, a spiral base is made like this is the rotation how it goes. it goes in this direction. Then another spiral could be made down here. Then this is chair standing tall. Then chair is tilted at 90 degree and the spiral image is taken chair is tilted at 90 degree and sideways also it is tilted, then another spiral is taken. So this way we get multiple images of the chair and then we try to connect those images to the available database that we have and the classes that we had that were taken from the ShapeNet website. So in the study they took 30 images of each object for training and 10 for validation, images 30 for training and 10 for validation. So always the background was kept neutral and white. So this was the data generation where they generated the data and the 30 set of the out inputs were taken in. Next step here is the classification. Classification and matching are definitely the two next steps. In the classification, the objective was to train the first model that is a classifier on a large number of images of 3D objects once the data set is prepared. Here the iterations were taken such as the significant factors that is the size of the validation or training sets was set, the amount of the classes, the amount of objects in each class, so certain iterations were taken. For instance, camera path of capture, then amount of classes, then the sizes of the validation and training set, how sets that was 30 and 10 were taken as I told you in the previous slide and in this case the only images were taken. So in some cases the images and the text data both could be put as an input depending upon the database that we have and depending upon the analytic system that we are using. Now alternate between various options with goal of improving the model's overall accuracy on the validation set was set. So here transfer learning. Phenomenon was applied which is useful because it allows to improve the model accuracy, improve the model accuracy. So it helps to improve the accuracy without having to go through the days of training. So a pre-trained model was taken in which the accuracy was improved by around more than 30 percent. So this was taken in the classification then comes the matching. Since in the classification itself, the model was that was selected was 200 into 200 pixels which proved to be the best model to balance between the speed and accuracy. Balance between speed and accuracy. In the matching phase, the model looks for the best matches. So this best matches are taken from the large collection of 3D models that is the matching model ranks the 3D models from the given class to the most resembling to least resembling. It can be classified into various levels from maybe uh, 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 most moderate 
least could be three levels. So these matches were made. So this matching modeling is another uh, CNN which was trained on pictures of objects belonging to a particular class and it was validated on pictures of the same objects but from different angles. So trained and validated. So these were different angles of the pictures which were taken. Majorly it helped to nest the classification and matching models into a single pipeline. Now the input image could be processed and classifying it before matching it with the related objects. So it also generates some prediction confidence. Prediction confidence which enabled to assess the degree of similarity between the original model and the match. So here even a small number of surfaces could guide the classifier and the matching step could help to take them to the right direction where the object is modeled. So one can determine the class of the model and one can cut down the time required for 3D modeling. So this is a quick uh, study that is taken to have a more detail on that. You can definitely go to the references which are given at the end of the slide. So 3D shape recognition and suggestions is a very larger idea. So the qualification of the mechanical or the architectural forms are taken through the machine learning and the big data analytics helps us to select the model. There are certain platforms which I just mentioned here to get the sources of the data like ShapeNet, Google 3D, we can process the data to have the classification, those could be taken. GitHub is also very helpful in the classification. So in the matching, one can design a system to match, one can develop its own system or one can also use the models which are available. So this is uh, how the big data analytics in computer design also helps to have a more informed decision on the basic shape and we can take the quick decisions even the amateurs or the people who are not from the core mechanical CAD background can have a overall view for instance the startup companies who are trying to develop complex uh, maybe uh, oxygen concentrator or so um, they do not have much information about the electronics component of that or the shape factor of that to have the shape factor to understand the shape factor they can have a quite a good study using these kinds of the models where they could classify and match the models and try to understand what the overall shape of the specific kind of the uh, product that they are trying to manufacture could be. I am saying could be because the final shape would only come when finally they would contact a mechanical engineer who would try to help them to get the final shape that could be finally produced. Produced means manufactured. So final manufacturing definitely has to go through certain tolerancing set in and certain matching with the CNC machines or the other machine setups which will actually manufacture or produce these models. So big data analytics helps us to have the information from the existing data. CNN is only one of the methods. There could be multiple other methods, multiple other heuristics that could be used such as maybe genetic algorithms could be used, artificial bee colony could be used which helps us to have a matching close to the final product that we are trying to see based upon the input that we have given. Let us talk about the path programming as a um, decision support system for manufacturing in the next lectures. Thank you.